CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.5, Given a Scenario, Manage and Configure Basic Security Settings in the Microsoft Windows OS. Users and Groups For our next topic, let's talk about users and groups in Windows. Whether it's a home PC or a corporate environment, managing user accounts is essential for maintaining security and functionality. As such, I think it would be prudent to go over the different types of accounts, the concept of least privilege, and the key differences between user access groups. First up, when setting up a Windows user, you have two main account options, a Microsoft account or a local account. When comparing the two options, a Microsoft account connects your login credentials to your online Microsoft profile, giving you access to a wide range of cloud-based services and features. This account type links your system with Microsoft's ecosystem, enabling you to use services like OneDrive, for cloud storage, the Microsoft Store, for app and software downloads, and let's not forget the ability to synchronize across multiple devices. For instance, your Windows settings, files, and even browser bookmarks can sync across your laptop, desktop, or even your phone. This can be particularly useful if you frequently switch between devices or if you want the convenience of accessing your files from anywhere. On the other hand, a local account is tied only to the device itself. It doesn't offer the cloud syncing options that a Microsoft account provides. Instead, everything stays local to that specific device. A local account is ideal for someone who prefers a more traditional, offline experience, doesn't need cloud services, or wants to keep their data completely local and independent from Microsoft's cloud infrastructure. This is often the choice for users who prioritize privacy or who use their computer in a more isolated, offline environment. Once you have selected between a Microsoft or a local account, your next decision will hinge on user permissions. But before we discuss user access groups, I want to bring up an important security principle, known as, least privilege. The idea behind least privilege is simple, users should have just enough access to do their jobs and no more. This minimizes the risk of accidental changes or unauthorized actions that could harm the system. When users have only the permissions they need, it limits the chances of malware spreading or sensitive information being accessed due to user error or a compromised account. By applying least privilege, you reduce the attack surface of your system and keep it more secure overall. Now that we understand the concept of least privilege, let's look at the different user access groups and how they fit into this principle, starting from the least access and moving up to administrative access. First up, we have the guest user account. This user group is the most limited in terms of access and is a great example of least privilege in action. This account is designed for temporary use, allowing basic tasks such as browsing the web or accessing shared files without the ability to install software or make any system changes. This type of access is ideal for situations where you need to provide short-term access without risking any significant modifications to the system. Next we have the standard account. This is the default account type for most users. It allows them to perform common tasks like browsing the internet, running applications, and managing personal files. However, standard users cannot install software or change key system settings, which helps prevent accidental damage or unauthorized modifications. This account is designed to balance usability with security, giving users enough access for everyday tasks while limiting the potential for harm. Moving on, we have the power user role. This access group provides more flexibility than a standard account but still doesn't offer full administrative control. Power users can install programs and adjust certain system settings, but are restricted from making critical changes that could impact the entire system. Though this role is less common in modern systems, power users have more authority than standard users, making this role a middle ground for those who need some additional access without full admin rights. Last up, the administrator account offers the highest level of control over the system. Administrators can install and uninstall software, modify system-wide settings, and manage other user accounts. Just keep in mind, with great power comes great responsibility. Because of this, it is crucial to limit administrator access to only those who truly need it, as this level of privilege makes the system more vulnerable to potential security risks. 
By following the principle of least privilege, administrator access should be reserved for specific tasks to minimize exposure to attacks or unwanted changes. Next up, I will cover a special security feature that is tied into user permissions, known as user account control, or UAC for short. This is a built-in Windows security feature that helps prevent unauthorized changes to your system. Anytime a program attempts to make system-level changes, like installing software or altering settings, UAC prompts you to confirm the action. Even administrator accounts will see these prompts, which acts as a safeguard to ensure that changes are deliberate. This feature is crucial in keeping your system secure from unwanted alterations, whether caused by malware or user error. One more feature that is tied into user access groups is the Run as Administrator option. If you are logged in as a standard user and need to run a program with administrative privileges, you can use the Run as Administrator option. By right-clicking on a program and selecting this option, you grant the necessary administrative permissions for that specific task without having to log into an administrator account. This is particularly helpful when performing one-off administrative tasks without giving full control to a user. Run as Administrator allows you to execute only the tasks that require admin privileges, keeping the overall system secure while getting the job done. In summary, by understanding user access groups, applying the principle of least privilege, and using features like user account control and run as administrator, you can effectively manage permissions while keeping your system secure. These tools ensure users can perform necessary tasks without compromising the integrity of the system. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.